The first step to any great spinnaker takedown is to make sure that your boat is really clean. You really need to make sure that the tack line does not have any knots in it and that the spin halyard is also clean and doesn't have any knots. Tack line is the responsibility of the jib person. They should be drop coiling the tack line as you come into the mark, you know, whenever they have a chance on the downwind. Spin halyard's a little bit easier when you're going downwind because there's not a bunch of line in the boat, but just make sure that's clear of any twists so it runs cleanly through the cleat when you uncleat it. The next step for any great takedown is to make sure that you have clear communication. The skipper should be the one calling the type of douse you're doing and then what direction you're going to be turning after the spinnaker is down. This just gives everyone on the boat a clear idea of what's going to happen when you take your spinnaker down. Then we really like to count down the douse as you come into the mark. Typically it's a count of three. So you go three, two, one, douse. In this video we're going to cover doing a Mexican takedown in your Melvis e-scout. To define a Mexican takedown, it's basically a jibe with a windward takedown. So you're sailing along on starboard jibe and you'll turn the boat onto port and take the spinnaker down at the same time. This is really good when you're coming into a gate mark and need to go around the left gate. And it's also good, you know, when you just have a single lured mark, you'll, you'll do a lot of Mexican takedowns to go around the bottom mark when you're coming in from the left side of the downwind. The driver is the, really the key person to make sure that you have a great Mexican takedown. If you have a bad takedown, it's probably the driver's fault. As you do your jibe into the takedown, the exit angle of the jibe is what's going to really make sure that you have a good takedown. You want to make sure that you're exiting the jibe at a fairly deep angle, but not so deep that the kite's not able to fall onto the deck of the boat. So what you want to be looking for is making sure that you're turning enough. So, so if you're not pulling the dowser line at all, it would just fall straight onto the deck of the boat. You're get, trying to get the spinnaker to collapse into the rig, into the jib, and kind of where the dowser hole is. If you overturn a Mexican takedown, can be pretty slow. In big wind you can capsize if you oversteer. And if you understeer or come out of the jibe too deep and your crew isn't fast enough on the dowser line, the spinnaker can blow away from the boat and it can make it a lot harder on your crew. So you really want to focus on having a great exit angle so that the kite is just kind of collapsing into the boat. It's a pretty similar exit angle to jibing, maybe a little bit hotter or closer to the wind than a jibe. The middle person's job is really similar to on the other types of takedowns. They want to go into the middle of the boat as soon as the skipper starts the countdown and pull all the slack out of the dowser line. Now if they're trimming the spinnaker as well, they really want to make sure that they are letting the spinnaker backwind into the rig before they begin their douse. A lot of times what happens is you'll turn through the Mexican takedown and the middle person will just release the spinnaker sheet and the kite will blow out away from the boat. You really want to make sure you're just holding that sheet so the kite backwinds into the rig. And this will make sure that you don't have too much dowser line to pull in or that the kite will blow in front of the boat. But having the slack out of the dowser line is going to make it a lot easier for you to take the spinnaker down. The jib person will be waiting for the call of douse from the skipper to release the spinnaker halyard. They just want to really let that halyard go and let it run freely. On a Mexican takedown, it's really important for the jib person to make sure that they're waiting to release the tack line until the last possible second. They can be kind of looking forward at the tack and they want to release it just before there's tension on the tack of the sail from the dowser line. You release it too early, which can, what can happen is the tack line can actually wrap around the pole or go underneath the bow of the boat, which we really want to avoid. One of the biggest keys to having a good Mexican takedown is to make sure that the jib person releases the board because you are jiving, so you're switching tacks. So just like you know, on your normal jibe, the jib person needs to be, be releasing the board to make sure that you have a, a good board coming out of the jibe. What they can do is release the board maybe a little bit earlier than they normally would on a jibe. They've got a lot going on in the front of the boat. They have to release the halyard. They have to release the tack. So a little bit of an early board drop is okay. The later you can drop it, the faster it's going to be. So definitely try to master dropping it later. 
but if you need to drop it a little bit earlier, it's not going to be a big problem. And of course, after the kite is down, you want to then pull your windward board up. The middle person can be responsible for this because once the kite's in the hole, the jib person's going to be really busy trimming the jib around the mark so the middle person can pull the board up. On this boat, we're sailing with four people, so we've kind of split up the, the middle person's job. Uh, there's one person trimming the kite, and then there's one person doing the dowser line and then pulling the board up. This is a great way to sail if you can, but if you just sail with three all the time, then that middle person's job is going to be trimming the kite and dousing the kite. Thank you for watching this Mountains tutorial. For more information on new boats, new quantum sails, and parts for your Malgus boat, please visit malgus.com.